Hey everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Nostalgia or Not. Now in this video series, I'm going to be playing through a classic video game and seeing whether or not it lives up to its legacy, or if it's more tripped down memory lane for those who played it at the time of initial release. The thing is, I've never played any of these games before. It's my first time playing, so I have no bias for or against. I can really see if these games stand the test of time. The first game that I've chosen for this series is very near and dear to a lot of people's hearts, so hopefully I don't ruffle any feathers or fur when I take on Banjo-Kazooie, 19 years after its initial release. So let's fly right in and see if it's a true classic or if it's just the nostalgia talking. Banjo-Kazooie was developed by Rareware for the Nintendo 64 and was released in June of 1998. Upon starting the game, you're greeted with a fun musical number featuring the title characters that help set the silly tone and the feel of the game to follow. As it starts, we are given a basic story in the form of a short cutscene. The premise is simple. An evil witch, Gruntilda, discovers that a little bear named Tootie is the most beautiful in the forest. So in her jealousy, Gruntilda kidnaps Tootie and plans on using a machine to absorb her beauty. Banjo, Tootie's brother, catches wind of this and ventures off to save his sister from Gruntilda's castle with the help of Kazooie, who is maybe Banjo's pet or friend or girlfriend, who for some reason is stashed in his backpack. Graphically, this game is rather appealing. Now a lot of games from the N64, PS1, Sega Saturn era have aged poorly in terms of graphics, but I think the bright, colorful, cartoon style really helps the aging process of this one. The main characters themselves all look good in design, and I especially like Mumbo Jumbo, but the enemy design felt really uninspired. The only time I really hated looking at this game was during the desert level, which was a terrible yellow color thrown all over the screen. It was like staring directly into the sun for an hour. But other than that, the levels looked good, had a fun atmosphere, and felt large in scale, so that when you enter one for the first time, there's a lot to explore. The goal of each level is to collect items. A lot of items. The most important of which are jigsaw pieces, which will open up the next level, and the music notes, that will unlock the next section of Gruntilda's lair in the hub world. Other items to collect include blue eggs, mumbo tokens, honeycombs, red feathers, gold feathers, waiting boots, turbo trainers, and my personal favorite, the Jinjos. Needless to say, if you don't like games where collecting is a big part, this likely won't be for you. Oftentimes it felt very tedious to get 100% of the items, and frankly, it wasn't very fun to do so anyway. But luckily you won't need every jigsaw piece or music note to progress to the next level. For the most part, these levels are very easy, and so are obtaining jigsaw pieces, which makes collecting them not very satisfying. You won't find yourself dying very often, and especially not from enemies, because they are few and far between. And that's a shame because each level is quite vast, but I end up feeling empty with few hazards or the need for tight platforming. The few times I did die were from large falls. Sometimes there are puzzles that will force you to think a bit, but there was no real brain busters here. Where this game really shines for me is in the new abilities that you can learn. There are tons of new moves that you'll learn throughout the game, and in many levels you can use Mumbo tokens to transform into different animals that can help you access new areas. The controls are very tight and responsive, so the moves are fun to perform, and you'll end up using them all fairly often, considering how many of them there are. There are so many moves that I think it resulted in one of the best uses for the N64C buttons that I've ever seen. Using the C directional buttons in conjunction with another button will help you keep track and manage all the new attacks and abilities. I was particularly happy with the flight mechanic. It never felt cheap, like you only had a few seconds to fly. It gave you plenty of time. And the flight controls better than most other games of this era, including Super Mario 64. The swimming ability, on the other hand, was by far my least favorite. It was the only time I really felt frustrated with the control, as it was clunky and I couldn't really get where I needed to go with precision. The camera was another real weak spot in terms of handling. It was usually okay, but in smaller spaces it gets really messy and difficult to see around you. My biggest disappointment with this game is actually in its sound effects and soundtrack, and I'm sure this is what many people will disagree with me on, but just the constant noises that come from the characters are very grating. During cutscenes and character dialogue, it's just gibberish, and I don't really find it charming at all, just really annoying. A good example is when using Kazooie's running ability. When she is running, she is constantly squawking the entire time you do it. Since Banjo runs much slower than Kazooie, you will be using this move a lot. And the sounds just don't end, she just keeps right on squawking. I was excited when I heard that this game had an amazing soundtrack, 
but I just wasn't feeling it. It all just sounds hokey and generic, like some sort of rundown amusement park. There isn't a tune that I had stuck in my head, and none of it was memorable. So after my first playthrough of Banjo-Kazooie, it's really easy to see why people love this game so much. And while it does have a lot of fun moments, I wouldn't necessarily call it a classic. To me, a classic is comprised of three elements. The first is that you never want to put that controller down. You find yourself getting lost in the game world, and then when you look back at the clock in the real world, it's 4am and you've been playing all night. It just really gets you hooked. The second element is that the game has a high replayability factor. After you first play through it, you might find yourself going back to it maybe weeks, months, or even years later to pick it up and play it again. The third element is that no matter how far off the initial release you first play through it, be it 30 days or 30 years, the game is simply a fun experience. To me, Banjo-Kazooie really didn't hit those three points, and I felt it was held back by the tedious nature of collecting items, the lack of enemies, the sparse levels, the ease of the overall game, and the poor handling of the camera. The game only took me about 10 hours to beat, but that was over the course of three weeks. The game never got me hooked. So in the end, I'm going to chalk this game's legacy up to nostalgia. And now, if you do love the game, go right ahead and keep on loving it. It's by no means a bad game. But if you've never played through the game before, I'd say it's okay to leave it in the past and skip the collectathon because it really doesn't live up to its fans' praise. Thanks for watching, everybody. Feel free to comment or send me an email. And remember, it's all fun and games.